Okay. We got however long it takes him to finish getting through that peanut butter. Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Always doing well when I got a box of plants to open up. Here I have an order from Plant Delights Nursery. It says it right there. And I'm sure it's in the title of this video. I've ordered from Plant Delights on many, many, many occasions. I'm sure the majority of my plant hauls and unboxings have more than likely been from Plant Delights. One of my favorite online nurseries. This package, I'm nervous about it. It shipped out, I think the 23rd or the 25th, which ended up being like the hottest week that we've had all summer. When I placed this order, I didn't know that that was going to happen. The heat was going to be that way. Otherwise I would have selected a different shipping time, but what's done is done. They're here, but these plants have been through some extreme heat. So I need to get this unboxed. I have a tub of water sitting over here so that everything can have a really nice soak before I get them planted. I'll probably, maybe I might soak them up to 24 hours. I don't know. I go on the fence about that. They'll at least get soaked for a couple of hours and uh, I will wait to get them into the ground and to start messing with their roots for at least 24 hours. Really want to make sure they have a chance to get hydrated. That's just the full disclosure here. They may not look that great. It's not Plant Delight's fault. It was just, it was just really hot outside. I did notice though when it arrived, it looks like they had poked some teeny tiny holes in the package. I don't, don't know how much help those are, but better than nothing, right? Wouldn't want to go too far with poking holes in a box anyways. You might really hurt something. Another thing I love about Plant Delights is their boxes, their plants are so easy to unpack. Look at that. Oh, oh, it's so thirsty. The way they have things set up with these inserts is just fantastic. I love it. Makes the whole process much easier. There it is. I've unboxed it. There's no, there's one left in here. One very, 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 very special plant. And this is the one I'm the most nervous about. But that's okay. The weather has cooled off. It's going to be cloudy here for a while, for several days. Actually, everything should rebound just fine. But who knows? We will see. Let's start looking at the plants. That's the fun part, right? I'll work my way around through these, get them popped out of here. Little cardboard flaps pop right out. And then the plants are totally free. They're ready to be unpacked. Oh, they don't feel very dry. That's good. There's definitely still moisture in those containers, so any of that yellowing is probably just from the heat, I would imagine. First plant here is a Bridget Chloe lavender. Oh, that smells divine. Just smells just like lavender. The reason I wanted this lavender specifically is because Plant Delights described this plant as being extra hardy as far as wet heat goes. They've been growing this in North Carolina where they have those hot, muggy, moist, you know, southeast types of summers. I'm in the Midwest, so we don't have it that humid, but it gets plenty hot and wet here. So that's one of the reasons I struggle with lavender. I don't really have a perfect spot in my yard where the soil drains just right to keep lavender without it tending to rot out. So I thought I would give this one a try. It's a nice sized plant. So it's supposed to stand up well to high heat, humidity, and rain. They didn't say anything about wet feet though. So this still needs to go into a very well-drained mix. Generally where I live, when I plant lavender, I like to make sure that the soil level is raised just a smidge above ground level. That helps prevent rot mostly from if we have a really wet winter. Otherwise, it's a lavender. I think they said this gets 30 inches high by up to five feet wide. Yeah, 30 inches high by five feet wide. 4A to 7B is where they rate its hardiness. Yeah, apparently the Kong didn't last long. The puppy's already over here chewing on the tripod. So that's a nice, good sized lavender. Just be growing it like a standard lavender. But lots of sun, well-drained soil, and uh, just I have to keep my fingers crossed that they don't die in the winter. Being hardy down to zone four should be okay, but winter's where I always lose the lavenders. Generally only when we have really, really cold, wet conditions in winter time. I'm talking like, you know, below 20 degrees with lots of moisture that just hangs around for a long time. That's when I tend to lose them. And then if we have a prolonged spell during summer where it just is hot and rains and rains and rains and rains and rains, then sometimes they tend to rot out. But I'm thinking with this one, at least the summertime issue with the lavender, that won't be a problem. We'll see, I'm excited about it. It smells fantastic. Oh, this is a fun one too. I feel like the camera is not going to behave with this plant though. Are you? Maybe not? Come on, you wanna focus? Kinda? 
This is a native. This is a bushmallow. Bushmallow, I think it's also a bush's wine cups is another name for it. This is a very nice sturdy native bushmallow. They, I don't think they're native into the St. Louis region. It's more the southwest area where the state hits and intersects with Arkansas, Kansas, and Oklahoma. That is with this specific type. These got really pretty deepish pink flowers on them that hang out above the foliage. They're hardy to zone five, very drought tolerant. I have an area up on my hill where I keep most of my native plants and this is going to go up there where I don't have irrigation that hits the spot. It's fairly dry. It's pretty rocky. It's not the best of soil, but I tend to leave it that way because the majority of the natives that I grow don't like a really, really rich soil. So this should fit in well up there. The Plant Delights, their description says that this will start flowering, I think they said early to mid-summer, and then it will keep on flowering sporadically all the way until fall, which is great. Who doesn't love that? To have those fun, pretty pink flowers. Foliage is really cute, almost clover-esque, but not quite. Well, really, it looks more like a mallow. It's like a cross between clover and sort of an oak leaf pattern. Anyways, that doesn't matter. This will fill out, have the foliage down low, and then the flowers come up just above it. They have a nice airy texture to them. They produce a very sturdy taproot. You can see its roots from right here. You see that in there? Yeah. So once these are in the ground, not going to be that easy to move. So this is a plant to definitely put in the ground with intention want to make sure that it's going right where you want it. That will run and spread, but it takes time and all you got to do is just take a sharp spade and pull the spots up where you don't want it to continue on growing. I haven't read anything about this particular bush model being one that spreads to a point where it gets out of control and becomes problematic, but I don't know. I haven't grown this type before, so we will see. It's welcome to take over and grow as much as it wants to in the space that I'm putting it. It can fill in that area to its heart's content and keep those pollinators nice and fed. Yeah, the soil's not dry on these at all, so I may not have to hydrate them for as long as I thought. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get everybody's travel pants off and then we can get through the rest of them. There we go, don't these just look beautiful? Yeah, that was a long time to spend in a box in that kind of heat. Oh, I didn't make the most important point with talking about the shipping. These were scheduled to be delivered on a Thursday and I, I don't know what happened. They didn't get here until Sunday, so not only were they being shipped during extreme heat. They spent a longer amount of time in the boxes. There was a hold up something with, uh, it was either UPS or FedEx. I don't remember. I haven't looked at my invoice since they showed up, but that would account for all of this loveliness going on up there. Not the end of the world. These are all rhizomous plants. Main thing you need to do here is keep those roots nice and healthy. The three of these are more dry than the others, but what are they? This is Zingiber Myoga White Feather. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. They're beautiful plants. The Zingiber, Zingiber Myoga is a type of hardy ginger. So here in zone six, and maybe even warmer parts of zone five, you can grow these in the ground as a perennial. They'll just die back to the ground and come back in late spring when things get fairly warm outside. Sorry, puppies. He's done with the Kong. Now he's on a mission to run around and knock into absolutely everything. I like to plant the zingibers in areas that get some morning sun and then filtered dappled light from something above them throughout the rest of the day. They always seem to do well with that. Nice, organically rich, moist, well-drained soil. Keeps those roots nice and healthy and helps them spread. I never like to put a ginger in a spot in the garden where it's not going to be able to spread really well. The white feather is a variegated version of zingiber myoga. There's another one called dancing crane. The white feather, carries its variegation on the outside of the foliage, so it's going to be more along the edges, whereas Dancing Crane has a lot of very heavy white variegation more in the middle of the leaves. It's not like just the middle, it's not like a hosta, it's dappled throughout. The Dancing Crane, which is the one that has the heavier white variegation towards the middle, I've grown those before and I just had so many issues with Sun Scorch with that particular variety. The White Feather, I never had those problems, so. It's, yeah, they don't look great right now, but they'll be okay. I'm not concerned with it. I'm really excited about these. I think their website says expect a five foot white clump in like 10 years, something like that. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up there on the screen. Or I have my computer right next to me. I could just look at what it says. Five foot wide patch in five years. So I was way off there. Good thing I looked. That's a decent size. You had about a foot of growth in all directions every year. They'll get about three feet tall. They put up their flowers from the ground level. It's supposed to be a yellow flower. Zingibers, the flowers come in different forms, colors really. 
but both the types I got are yellow flowering types. But it's held down low, so once these are big and established and they have a clump where the foliage is all grown out at an angle, it's not going to be that easy to see the flowers once they're down there in the ground. But it's still exciting. Roots, rhizome, and the flowers are edible. You know, ginger. It's going to taste like ginger. But with the gingerbirds, the old mature foliage shouldn't be eaten. That's, that's not going to be good for you. Okay, next up. More gingers. This is gingerbread myoga silver era. Also, pardon if there's any background noise, there's some construction people here. They just showed up and started hacking away at the storm sewer that's back here, but I'm gonna keep going. The silver arrow, very similar to the white feather as far as its growth and habits are concerned. So a clump of about five feet wide and five years, three foot tall, stocked, hardy to zone 6A, potentially a little bit cooler than that, maybe 5B, warmer parts of 5A if you have a nice microclimate for them and they prefer to have that part sun to light shade. And the way the light's hitting them right now is really about what I like to see in the afternoon for these. So they can go full sun in the morning and then this nice fun dappled light that's up there in the afternoon. But the silver arrow, it doesn't, you can't tell right now because they haven't gotten their variegation yet on them, but these have what, in my opinion, is just to my taste, some of the most beautiful variegation that I've ever seen for a perennial that can be grown all the way down into zone six and warmer parts of zone five. To me, it's the perfect dupe for the Alpinia Zarumba variegata. It's not as intense at all. It's much more muted variegation. Their foliage isn't as wide, but that's the overall aesthetic that I get from these plants. It's much more mild, gentle variegation than you would get on the variegata, and it's a more dainty plant than the variegata, but still absolutely beautiful. Not just going to have the wider chunks of variegation like you see on a lot of plants. Well, and even like with the white feather and the dancing crane, it's far more detailed, lots of lines, not as much contrast, but to me, it just, it speaks to my soul. I'm really excited about these gingers. Variegation will start to come through as these mature. I would imagine probably next year, be able to see that on these, but right now they're still too small. So they just look like regular gingerbread myogas, which are fantastic plants. That's another option if you aren't into the variegation. You can just plant the regular gingerbread myoga. They grow fairly vigorously. They just have green foliage, just like you're seeing right here. Fill in an area fairly quickly, and those roots and flowers are edible on them. And the new shoots should be edible too. I'm not planting any of these to eat them. I have before in years past, but they're just so pretty. I've never, I don't really like to dig them up and start chomping away on the rhizomes, but that is certainly an option if that's something you wanted to do. If you've been around the channel since last summer, these might seem like repeats, because they are. So I did a plant lights order early June last year with the silver arrows and the white feathers. And these are to replace those plants. If you don't remember, I ended up being sick like immediately after that video and the recovery was pretty long. So they didn't get the care that they needed. They didn't even end up getting put into the ground until like October. I had them laid out. It's a whole, it's a whole big long story. I had people helping me and it just, it's not the end of the world. I don't care. I'm just happy I was able to get a hold of some more. I wanted to order these in the springtime because that would be the ideal time to get these in the ground, spring or early summer, so that they have a lot of time to spread those rhizomes out and establish themselves and have more energy stored up to make it through the winter. But they weren't available. So late August, still fine. Still going to have a couple of months-ish to be able to get these to, I'm not going to establish themselves in a couple of months, but it's better than nothing. So with both of these types, the silver arrow that's up here, and then I have the what, the white feather down there in the bucket. Pardon the fan. It was in the way of the shot, so I just I laid it on its side. I ordered an extra of each one. So two of them are going to go in the ground of each variety, and then one of each is going to go into a nice wide shallow container where they'll get put up on drip, and then I'll store them in a very cool, dark, dry space during the winter time. And hopefully those will make it through the winter just in case these don't. In case I'm getting them planted too late in the year, then I'll have that back up. That's the plan anyways. I used to have a huge clump of the white feather and dancing crane in the backyard. They're right in between my needle palms or outside of a bay window. And uh, as the maple tree that's over there in that area grew, that just wasn't getting enough sun for them anymore. But I have a few spots down where the impatiens are if you watch the previous garden tour where I'm going to put some of these and then I'm going to scatter them around in some other spots that get some nice morning sun and afternoon shade. I, of course, am planting the gingerbread, the variegated varieties, because to me they have a tropical aesthetic to them. However, these also make an excellent plant for woodland type gardens because of that airy nature that you get with the foliage. Like, I mean, look at that. 
It's just beautiful. You know, imagine that at three feet tall. These leaves will get up to a foot long, up to three inches wide, and the way they stagger across those stalks. They really are lovely plants. So whether or not you're going for that tropical aesthetic doesn't really matter. To me, this is an excellent plant to have in your garden, if that's what you're going for. But if not, they're just pretty no matter what. They fill in a space very nicely. They look lush. They just add a lot of life to whatever space you put them in because of that lushness in their growth habit. All right, that's enough about the gingers. I'm going to give these a soak. And last but not least, hopefully, this is the one I'm most nervous about. Oh, okay. I mean, it doesn't look fantastic, but it doesn't look anywhere near as bad as I was concerned it was going to after having sat in a box in the heat for a prolonged period of time. That's a relief. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is a hosta. Go ahead and get its travel pants off and get a better look at it. Full disclosure, I spent a lot of money on this plant. I tend to go for things that are more affordable and on clearance, particularly with house plants, annuals, tropicals, but with perennials, sometimes I don't mind spending a little bit more if it's something that I absolutely love. Now, it might be hard to tell from the way it looks right here. I'll go ahead and pull up the web page, read the description, because that kind of says it all. Hasta Time Traveler is a 2018 plant delights introduction of the sport of stitch and time that we found in 2008. Hasta Time Traveler is one of the most unique hostas we grow since each round corrugated golden leaf appears to have a pointed wide edge hosta leaf sewn in the middle. Since Hosta Time Traveler isn't consistently reproducible in tissue culture, we are relegated to only divisions which aren't frequent. Hosta Time Traveler isn't the most vigorous hosta we've grown, so we suggest it only be grown by experienced hosta collectors. That's why this was an expensive plant. It doesn't put up enough growth for divisions all that frequently. It doesn't sound like it has a lot of vigor in its growth, but the foliage on it is so cool, and I bet it looks even cooler when the poor thing hasn't sat in a 100 degree box for five days. It's all right, it's going to be okay. I'm not that concerned. The soil isn't terribly dry, but I am still going to give this a soak along with the ginger. I think that that would be a good idea. So this was one of those plants where I saw it and then I couldn't stop thinking about it. When that happens, I tend to say, okay, we'll give it four or five days. And if you're still thinking about it, go ahead and get it. As long as that's a option to go ahead and get it. And uh, four or five days later, I was still thinking about it and obsessing over it. I am just crazy about the variegation on it. I love the shape of the foliage, how it looks like it's a really nice big heart that's somewhat crimped and pulled and tightened with the pretty variegation in the middle, surrounded by that more chartreuse limey green on the outside. It's a plant to me that when this is in the garden, it's going to stand out. This is what I would consider an investment plant. This is a plant where I will hopefully have it for a very long time. It's going to go in the garden and stand out and hold its own with no matter what's around it because that variegation is so intriguing. It's just so different and unique from anything I've really seen in other hostas. You know, there are tons, tons of different hostas, but this is the only one that I've ever been like really, really, really excited about. And I cannot wait to see what this looks like when it, well, when it recovers. And in the next few years, as it puts on some more growth. This isn't one that gets terribly large. I think they said it only gets 12 inches tall. It's not a huge hosta, but 12 inches tall, that's still a good enough size that that foliage is going to stand out and look really pretty in the garden. And this plant really was the main reason that I placed the order. I already wanted to place the order to have the gingers and get those home. I had them in the cart for like, two or three weeks. And then I saw this and I just, I absolutely fell in love. If you ignore the bad foliage and just look at the pretty ones, I mean, come on, how cool is that? It could just be me. Maybe this just seems like a regular old hosta, nothing special about it. But for me, it was a plant I got excited about. And when you've been doing the garden stuff for so long, I don't get excited about plants all that often. I mean, I, I appreciate them and I love them. But it's not very often, like, somebody asks me if I have a wish list plant. I don't really have anything that stands out as like a, oh, I really wish I had that. I and mean, there are some things that would be a fun plant to have, like the ceiling wax palms. Those are awesome, but not ideal to grow as a house plant, so I would never grow it here. But as far as perennials are concerned, oh goodness, what's going on over here? Okay, I'm speaking most about perennials. You know, there, there are only so many things that really get me going. So when I saw one that really got me excited, had to have it and I'm happy to have it. Cannot wait to get that into the garden, watch it grow. The same with everything else that's down here. All the gingers are having a pretty good soak. 
and uh, I'm going to move them into the shade. It was supposed to be cloudy all day, but the sun popped out. I'm going to pull this over into the shade. The lavender and the bush mallow, they had a good drink. I'm not planning on doing anything with these gingers until at least 24 hours have passed. They've had a chance to hydrate. Those stalks are going to be more tender if they're dehydrated, so much more prone to breaking and bruising. I want them to go into the ground with as much energy and hydration as possible. So that's what's going on there. They're gonna have a good soak. The one that I reserve from each type, one of the silver arrow, one of the white feather, those will go into a nice shallow container to avoid root rot gingers or shallow rooted plants. And others will go into the ground probably with some starter fertilizer just because it's late into the year and I wanna get them going. So I'll have to keep a watchful eye on this one. So anytime you use those starter fertilizers to dogs, they go nuts. They go nuts and want to dig everything up. Compost starter fertilizer, I'll make sure the soil is nice, light, and fluffy, and in a location where it doesn't dry for an extended period of time. Want to make sure that that soil stays consistently moist and rich. And that's everything. But it just, but it just, I know, it was a lot of gingers. I'm actually surprised that these don't look worse than they do. I was really, really, really concerned how these were going to look when they showed up in the mail after the shipping delays where I was like, okay, it's Friday, they're not here. And it said they'd be here Saturday. And I was like, okay, they're not gonna be here. And then today, Sunday, they showed up. I was relieved to get them. I popped that box open as soon as I got them and took them outside and made sure it stayed in the shade and got the camera equipment out. Immediately got these opened up and went through this as quickly as I could to make sure they get some water. The poor things. They'll be okay though. Anyways, comment down below. How's everybody doing? Say hi, I love talking to everybody. Do you have some gingers you like growing? Hardy type gingers you can suggest to other people or hostas people get really into hostas and i can understand why there are tons and tons and tons of different varieties to grow what are some of your favorites i'm gonna scoot this a little bit further into the shade and make sure that all the others are out of the sun and well watered and i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye